Hey YouTube, today I wanna to show you how I put in this Wayne battery backup sump system. And also I replaced an old uh, kind of beat up, junky, non-sealed uh, sump dome with this nice jackal sealed uh, sump dome. This is a radon sump dome for a radon system, but if you don't have a radon system, it's okay. You can just cap this thing and it just looks really nice when it's done. Uh, if you like my videos, hit the like button, I'd appreciate it. If you wanna check out my other videos or get new videos, hit the subscribe button. Uh, and I'd appreciate that. I also just got a website started, um, so go ahead and uh, check that out. The links are all in the description. And then I'm gonna put links down there for this dome, actually a, a better version of this dome. The one that I really like has, I think, a plexiglass window here. So. Um, and then uh, that sump backup system. So you can check those out if you want to. All right, let's go ahead and get started. I'm gonna, uh, I, I wanna get this old cover off so that uh, I can start putting the new one on. And in order to do that, I gotta take this coupling off. Sorry, cell phone. There we go. Uh, in order to do that, I gotta take this coupling off and I gotta cut this pipe. Uh, I'm gonna re-plumb this anyway with three inch um, plumbing because that's what the radon um, dome in inlet is. So anyway, I'm gonna just gonna cut this pipe maybe about right here and get this off and slide the new cover on and start getting it in place ready. You want to make sure you shut your sump pump off so it doesn't spray water out of here on you. Um, but anyway, uh, also there's a bunch of water in this pipe that's going to pour back down. So you want to disconnect the bottom half of this check valve so that water doesn't pour back out on you. Okay, the sump pump's hooked back up. Um, next, I'm just gonna clean up. You gotta clean up this whole area, scrape all this old glue. Uh, we're gonna put that new dome on here. We just want it to be nice and clean. Um, so that's really what this part's gonna be. Just me cleaning up. All right, here's the backup system uh, I'm gonna install. It's a Wayne. I'll put a I'll put a link in the description to it. But it's uh, cast iron. It's supposed to be pretty nice. It gets really good reviews. And then it kind of just shows you how you should set it up. You should have two sump pumps. You know, this is your backup one. Um, this is your one plugged into your wall. And then you're going to have a battery that's going to power this one in case the power goes out. Uh, so this serves two purposes. One, if our power goes out, it's usually when it's raining. So it's usually when you need the, your sump pump. So this will back that up. And then also if this pump just fails and stops working, this one will kick in because it has a separate float switch. So here's what's in the box. Sump pump, pretty standard. And then I'm gonna guess this is a battery box housing and the back up. Yeah, so see, this is a different kind of sump pump. This runs on DC power, which you got from this battery. So yeah, it's gonna plug in right here. Uh, these probably go to your float switch, I'm not sure yet, and this goes to your battery to get power. Probably your float switch. Zip ties, tie your cord up. Not sure what that's for yet. This is going to be your um, charger that will charge your battery while um, the power is on and then you know it will back up so i guess i didn't mention you will need a battery for this system but anyways i have one of those so i'm going to use that battery uh, anyway this is the system that um, i'm going to be putting in back there and this is your backup sump you know, you've got to fit now two sumps in this basin. They do recommend you have at least a 16 inch sump basin. I, I think that's what this is. This is uh, it's probably 12 inches, 16 inches. So I think I'm good there. Uh, something like that. And I think that's going to work pretty good. 
rotate it just a little so plumbing comes out the side. But yeah, uh, I think those are both gonna fit in there nicely and will be good. So I'm gonna plug that sump back in so that water doesn't build up too much. <clears throat> so the next thing you gotta start doing is uh, plumbing this sump out of here. And to be honest, uh, in order to do it, I need to know where it's gonna come out of the dome. Um, <clears throat> actually, I kind of forgot that. This pipe's gonna need to come out of the dome too. So I'm gonna go get the dome and retrofit the dome in so that we can start kind of seeing where this plumbing is gonna come out. Uh, they put these four outlets right at the side so you can kind of bring plumbing in wherever. And then there's two here. So I think I'm gonna move those to where I can kind of get to them. Maybe something like that. So these are nice square to the wall. Got this extra one here in case I need it. You know, you want it nice and centered on your stuff. And go somewhere like that. I'm not gonna put it down yet just because I'm kind of fitting everything into place, but that's about where it's gonna go. Okay, so that's kind of the dome, what the dome's gonna look like. Uh, it is a little off-centered right now, which is fine. Um, I just did that because that makes the plumbing come out of here real nice uh, where it's at. So, you know, now, now that you've got it kind of in place, you can drop it back down and just kind of look at where everything's gonna fall. These should fall right on bolts, which they do. Uh, you know, I may need to adjust this just like an inch this way or this way, but anyway, overall, it looks pretty good. All right, I'm at Lowe's. You didn't really think I'd get through this project without making a hardware store run, right? I'm gonna show you my plan and uh, what I'm gonna get. Sorry, I don't have a tripod with me, so I'm gonna do my best, but I'm gonna run my backup pump here and my main pump here. I'm gonna put the check valves under the sump dome um, and I'm gonna have those in there. Those are uh, hose clamps, so you can still remove them and change the pump. And then I have to come out the side of my sump dome because the other hole up here, I'm gonna use for the radon system. So I only have one hole in that dome. So unfortunately I have to come out the side, which is not ideal for a sump pump, but it's just for the backup side. So I think it'll be okay. Um, I need a 90 here, I need a 90 here, and I need a 45 here. And then I need a Y right here. Uh, sorry about the focus. And then um, I'm gonna connect, I have ABS up here, and then I have uh, schedule 40 down here. So I'm gonna use a Fernco for that. So I'm probably gonna buy six 45s, six 90s, an extra Y and a couple Fernco's. Why? Because I know better. Um, my goal is to not have to come back to the hardware store. Also, I'm gonna need two one and a half nipples that screw into the bottom of the sumps, which I actually have two, but I'm gonna buy one extra just so I have it on hand. That's my plan of how I'm gonna plumb this thing. All right, I know my backup pump needs to run out of this hole right here, one of these things on that side. And uh, they give you this cool pattern that you can just put on here. Um, and then it gives you a center mark for your drill. And then you take it out and then you drill that with a hole saw. And then on the directions, they actually tell you, depending on which pipe you need to bring out, which hole saw size you should use. So I'm gonna use a one and a half inch pipe. I need a two and a quarter inch hole saw, which I have right here. Um, if you don't have a hole saw kit, I recommend you get one because I use mine all the time. But anyway, so that I'm just gonna kind of double check. Look at this, you know, it, yeah, it looks like it's the right one. This is for the one and a half inch uh, pipe, which they give you these grommets in the kit also. And so I wanna bring the sump out that way and go up to the Y. So I'm gonna turn this and go ahead and put this on here and uh, drill my hole. So again, that just gives you your center mark and then you can uh, just drill the hole out with your hole saw. Just like that. And then uh, I'm just gonna clean it up a little bit and this should go right in there um, when you're done. Just use a razor blade, clean up your edge a little bit. Okay, I'm not gonna put the grommet in there yet, but um, you know, I mean, it's really easy. It just pops in there like that, but I want to have a little bit of slop so it's easy for me to work with the pipe. Okay. I'm just going to mark where I need to cut it. And so I know the bottom, you know, I marked right here at the bottom, but I need to leave a little bit of pipe in here to fill in this, you know, whatever. 
doesn't have to be perfect because there's a little bit of give in this. It's not like working with rigid metal copper or something, but anyway, that's what I need. Quick, and one more fit here. Make sure everything looks like it's gonna jive. Not gonna put that all the way in, but that's gonna go there. This is gonna go on here. this piece out you get a pretty good idea of if this is going to work and it looks like it's going to so um, that all looks good so yeah we'll go ahead and move this into position and start plumbing this in all right so at this point I'm, I'm getting ready to be uh, I'm basically ready to start kind of plumbing all the stuff into place but I don't want this moving around when I'm doing it so it's about time I tap con this to the ground and seal it um, which is a little bit of a job, but we're gonna do that. And then I also wanna replace this with new pipe because I wanna move this check valve that's um, up at the top all the way down into here into the pit like I showed. So uh, I think I have another one of these. I'm just gonna replace this, but I'm gonna do that first. secure this dome to the concrete and so for that you want to um, use silicone and silicone all the way around and then you're going to need a hammer drill to drill into your concrete and then I'm going to use um, short tap guns uh, like one inch or something uh, that's not it anyway about one one and a quarter so you're going to drill your holes out and then put your silicone in and then uh, tap kind of down and I will say hammer drill Pretty nice tool to have. This is a Harbor Freight one. If I could go back in time, I'd probably buy a nicer name brand one because I've used it a ton in my life. But it's been pretty good to me. Uh, it is starting to crack on some of the plastic pieces. So I'll probably get a new one. But anyway, for now, that's what I got. As you know, I'm running this out of there, right? And then I'm gonna Y into this. Looking pretty good. So now I'm gonna wanna put this rubber grommet in here. I'm hoping I can slide this in. Really the grommet should be in and then you should slide the pipe in, but there's no way I'd fit the pipe out there. So. We'll see what we can do. Okay, I tried and tried and tried to get this pipe, to get the grommet in there with the pipe in already, and it's literally impossible. So fortunately I have some couplings. I'm just gonna cut it, slide the pipe in the grommet and do the coupling right here. So it's really not a big deal. But anyway, I should have thought about that. I might've been able to slide in there before I screwed the dome down. But uh, yeah, whatever. All right, so now lubricate this.
yeah, there's a little chance I would have ever gotten that grommet in without that taking that out. So anyway, I'll just pull this in and it's gonna go right to this. That might be a little far. Just like that. I'll just couple those together. It's no big deal. So let's go ahead and do that. So this is my last decision to make. I could put the Y in right here, but anytime I need to replace a sump, I'm gonna have to lift this a lid up, right? And it's gonna hit this Y. That's all the space I'm gonna get. So I'm actually gonna extend the piece over there um, just a little bit up, make this a little higher and move this Y up the thing. All right, this part's gonna be a pain. Um, I, I gotta, you know, cut this and start plumbing it in and my sump's gonna fill up a bunch because I gotta remove the check valve and all the water and the pipe's gonna pour back down into it. So I'm not gonna be able to talk much. I'm just gonna do it. Cut this short so my pipe was a little left and I either was going to cut this and add some in or just jag, jog this over which is what I decided to do. It's not perfect but it'll work. Um, and then I'm just letting it all set for a couple minutes before I turn on the water and, and get this water out because uh, once the water goes on those check valves are going to hold water and there'll be water all in this system. So uh, you want to wait as long as possible before you put water. Um, against those joints. Uh, the reason I actually decided to do this project is because the sump pump has been getting stuck on uh, and so the switch the switch is inside here um, you know this rubber thing gasket sometimes goes bad or whatever and just this finally goes bad. The pump seems to be fine so I do keep a backup as I mentioned um, so I'm gonna throw this backup in while I got everything apart and then I may try to order this. You can order this switch kind of head and stuff. I may try to order that and uh, rebuild the pump I got. But anyway, for now, I'm gonna go ahead and uh, remove this one. I was right when I installed these on the thing. So unfortunately this pump's only a year old, the switch, but you know, my pump runs 20, 30,000 times a year. So it seems to be frying those switches. I am gonna look for an alternate, stronger switch in the future, but. This is the backup switch for the, um, for the backup pump. Uh, you know, it just needs, water comes in, floats up, and makes this thing come on. So this needs to be tied to your backup line. It's got to be higher than that other switch, but not too high that the, you know, sump doesn't run right. I'm going to look for a place for that. This band clamp comes with it. So we're just going to slide this through here like that and then get it down in on the pipe. I'll show you where I put it. I'm actually gonna put it this way. So I can get to the screw. Okay, so you can see I've got the float switch installed right there on the, right here on the side of this um, backup pump thing. So there's a band clamp that goes around it that I showed 
and it just uh, goes right to that pipe there. So that is set, it's hard to see, but it's set higher than that white one here. So that um, if that pump fails and then that switches all the way up and it's not going on, it'll finally get to this level and it'll go on. Now you wanna make sure that's set lower than the water level coming in. Cause the water level coming in, you want it to pump out, you know, so it's really hard to tell, but yes, this switch is lower than this level right here. Um, and we'll test it out just to make sure, but it is. Uh, so anyways, that's where the backup uh, switch is gonna go. And then you need to zip tie this um, up. So I'm just gonna put a little zip tie here and then I'm gonna zip tie these cords up too and just kind of clean up everything now. All right, our last step is to put this little, put this one and a half inch plate on and then this grommet that fits inside here needs to go on. I believe it is directional. I think the little ridge goes up into this thing. So it kind of, uh, when you tighten it down, it squeezes it into there. So this is the, the lid that needs to go onto the battery over here. And it comes with these ring terminals, which are pretty hard to put onto those lugs. So I just have an old uh, trickle charger that I'm just gonna pull these wires out of and just make them uh, clamp on so they're a little bit easier just to put on and off. Okay, so now it's time to wire everything up and try it out. Um, you know, there's not that many connections. There's this, this is your float switch that's in the sump pit. This is your main power. And then you've got your transformer that plugs into the wall. And then this is what charges your battery. And these are all keyed, so you can't plug them in the wrong spots. So it's pretty self-explanatory. So I'm just gonna get this stuff plugged in and just test it out. I'll clean all this up when I'm done. I just want to make sure everything's working. So, okay. So I plugged that in. It's gone back to green, which is good. All right, there's a couple of things you want to test. First, you want to test that your pump works, that it will pump water um, just off the battery. And then you want to test that your float switch is actually at the right spot so that your main pump, um, so that your backup pump doesn't run instead of your main pump. And then you want to check what happens if the power actually goes out and just make sure everything kind of works correctly. So first we're just going to test the pump and make sure the pump works. Okay, so there is this test button, um, push to self test. So when you push that button, the pump, the backup pump should operate. All right, so I'm getting ready to push the button right now. There it goes. So that was testing the pump using this button. Now that just makes sure the pump works. But what you really want to know is if the pump works with this float switch that I put in. So this is the backup pump float switch. You know, that is the float switch. This is the float switch for the main sump. And uh, that one, you know, you want that one to be lower than this one. So this is your pump that operates normally. And then if this pump fails, then the water level gets higher and higher and higher, hits this float switch, and this float switch controls your backup pump. So that's how that works. Um, so, you know, I just push the button that tests that the pump works, but now we're gonna actually just plug in the system like normal and go ahead and let the water hit this level and see what happens. Okay, so as you can see, um, my, my water has pushed this pump up uh, basically to the, to the level that should make it operate and I have it unplugged so that this pump won't operate and I'm waiting just until the water gets to this switch and we'll see what happens. There it is. Ah. 
awesome it works so yeah that's basically simulating if this pump were completely unplugged or failed and that pump works so uh we are good to go all right the next thing i want to do is um there is a specific hole for the plugs uh that they're meant to come out of it's like a grommet and it's got you know it's got one hole in it already for you but then you can cut a couple extras for extra cords but anyway i'm going to bring the cords out the correct hole just so they're where they're supposed to be Boom, you got a nice airtight seal of your wires coming out of there, just like that. Looks pretty good. The next thing you wanna do is put this um, piece in. So this plate goes flat on here and there's a little rubber grommet here um, that I'm just gonna roll down the pipe. And there's a little tiny lip on it that I believe goes up. It's really hard to see, but there's just a little tiny lift that goes into this groove. And then as you tighten this down, it tightens down that gasket. And so uh, it's gonna go on just like that. And that's gonna make this airtight. Be careful when you're putting these bolts in. But this, these are what are on the bottom, okay? And these are just pushed in. So if you push too hard, you'll pop these out and they'll fall into the tank. That's probably my least favorite thing about these covers. But once you know about it, it's not that bad. You just, you don't wanna jam these down. You wanna just screw them in and let them, let them catch these threads so that you don't push them down into your tank. Let's crank on those those are just going into plastic <clears throat> they're just compressing that gasket in there so you know it doesn't take much to make that airtight okay next I just want to clean up these wires make them look good Okay, here's the final result. Wires cleaned up, everything installed, everything plumbed. Last thing uh, I was gonna tell you is um, the radon system. This does not carry water, it just carries air. And so uh, I didn't actually glue all these PVC joints with PVC glue. I'm actually just gonna silicone them so that they can be moved or removed. And then this is gonna be where I, if I ever have to replace the sump, you have to lift that whole lid up so I'm gonna um, allow for uh, this joint down here to slip out. And I'm going to allow for this joint up here to slip up. So I can kind of just slide that whole tube out and then move it out of the way and then lift this whole, um, lift this whole lid right here. And then I can replace my pumps because I mean, those pumps are still gonna fail even though I have a backup at some point in time. So just to give you an idea of the whole system, if your power were to go out, uh, it's equivalent of unplugging this. If your power goes out, your alarm's gonna go off. 
it's gonna go off for about 30 seconds or maybe a minute and then it stops. Additionally, every time your backup sump runs, you're just gonna get a short tone just to kind of warn you that it's running. So that if my main pump fails and I hear this like chirp, 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 you know, every 20 minutes or 10 minutes or I'll know my backup's running. Um, the last note, something I really like to do is this. I always write when I install my stuff on all my equipment. Uh, it really just helps later when you're just trying to get an idea of like how long did this pump last, you know, or how long has this water heater been installed, etc. So I always do that on all my stuff. One last thing I plan on doing, uh, the, the sump pump cover that I'll link in my description is the Jacko cover, but it has, they started putting a PVC or acrylic um, window in here. And my old one actually had that window. It's, this is a really nasty old one, but um, it did have that window. And I would like to have that window so that I can kind of shine a flashlight down in there and just see what's going on in the sump pit. It's really nice to not be completely blind. So I plan on cutting and just leaving maybe like a half inch or something and then cutting a piece of acrylic out and, and uh, siliconing it in here and making it look real nice. Um, so if you order one of these, I would order the one with the, with the window. That's the one I'm gonna link to. Uh, I wish I would have seen that one when I bought this. Um, but anyway. Just uh, one last tip, I I'm gonna do that one of these days. All right, last, I just wanna say thanks for watching. Appreciate you watching these videos. Uh, if you enjoyed the video, hit the like button and um, go ahead and if you want more videos like this or to check out any of my other videos, uh, hit the subscribe button or check out my channel. Uh, I've got a website that uh, I've been working on. Um, it's pretty new, so you're welcome to visit that. I put it down in the description and then I put links to the, um, the backup system, the Wayne backup system, and the Jackal sump pump cover that uh, I used in, in this video. Uh, so if you're interested in those, you can click those links. And uh, it does give me a small commission if you do order them, but it doesn't cost you anymore. Um, I'm not just pushing those products. I actually installed them, I use them, but uh, yeah. So um, anyway, appreciate you watching and uh, good luck with uh, whatever DIY projects you get yourself into. Thanks.